like uh, Ryan is playing Starship Graveyard as Battlefield. Yeah, and Mas Eisley Spaceport for Mas Eisley Spaceport. No, Mas Eisley Spaceport has been a uh, Battlefield. It's been gaining a little bit of popularity lately. It's it's simply because it's a Battlefield that doesn't do anything really. But it's irrelevant because he's not using it, obviously. So we're, we're going to be using the Starship Graveyard, the uh, Battlefield that lets you, when you claim the Battlefield, lets you put a upgrade or support card in your discard pile on top of your deck. So starting off, we see a holdout blaster, and uh, I'm not sure why. Why did he discard? Oh, I see. So he, he it equipped a holdout blaster onto a trooper, and then used squad tactics, which allows you to uh, roll out all your non-unique characters to roll out both the trooper and the other trooper with the holdout blaster on it. And Django's, Chris's Django's activating in response. Uh, not a very good roll for him, I but expect Ryan will. Yeah, activate back in response. <laughs> well, we'll see. I mean, with a roll like that, you might not care, right? And it looks like he did. So th this is one of the reasons why I wanted to show this deck, especially Chris's deck. I'm not sure if Ryan's running the same version, because uh, Chris's deck is very... Like, he plays a lot of support. So he plays First Order TIE Fighter. He plays uh, the Speeder Bike Scout. Right. And in order to fund all that, he's running two copies of Drudge Work, the upgrade that allows you to, or sorry, the support that allows you to exhaust a, a non-unique, no, no, any character rare. actually, oh, really? to gain one resource, yeah. And uh, of course, Underworld Connections, which is just, it costs you two resources to play, but straight up exhaust to get one resource. And so with that steady flow of income, it allows him to reliably play all those supports. So now Ryan decides to activate Django in response to Chris's Stormtrooper role. Uh, looks like one melee and one resource here. Uh, takes the money. Back to Chris now. Rolls out his other trooper. Gets a resource. Okay. Uh, so, it, so Django uh, has already taken a total of four damage here. He had two shields on him earlier. That is Chris's Django. But this deck really isn't about... Uh, Django Fett. I mean, I talked to Chris. I've played this deck, uh, Chris's deck a couple of times, and he's told me that Django is there just to distract your opponent. Sure. And they're going to kill him first most of the time. And and Chris's deck, his upgrades, like, he doesn't have a lot of upgrades, but they're all things like that holdout blaster like he just played, and the F11 Yeah, the things rifle. that have re redeploy. Redeploy. So, what, what it does is that Django dies, all those weapons go on a stormtrooper, and, and Chris's deck runs two copies of Endless Ranks. And the whole idea is that you're always going to try to kill the most dangerous uh, character on the board. And <laughs> while he... So you kill Stormtrooper, all the weapons on it, moves the other Stormtrooper, then the Endless Ranks back, the Stormtrooper just died. So he's like playing, he's juggling his uh, upgrades around. It's actually really cool uh, to see that. And so in order to do all those expensive tricks, plus the supports, that's why you need two copies of Drudge Work and two copies of uh, Underworld Connections. Okay, so another holdout blaster, and I think this is going to be using the ambush. You might roll out a trooper here, or maybe you can just take money with the... Uh... No, 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 okay. Yeah. So Ryan, Ryan uh, tried to play a support, but he didn't... He forgot for a moment that... Uh, the holdout blaster had ambush on it. All right, we have adjusted the volume a bit. Please let us know uh, how that's going. Okay, so with his ambush, act extra action, uh, Chris rolls out the first order stormtrooper, getting two ranged dice. Django, Ryan's Django activates in response, and now Chris is thinking about activating his Django in response. <laughs> Decides not to because, again, it's not a very threatening roll. So yeah. yeah, I mean, you want you want to be able to roll in reaction. That way, your opponent doesn't have the ability to modify any of your dice before you can right. use them. But but he can just wait until uh, Ryan rolls out another stormtrooper. Right? Exactly. Yeah. You just you want yeah. to be have that free opportunity to use your dice before they have the chance to get rid of them. Yeah. And now we see. Now he decides to activate his Django in response to Ryan's stormtrooper, like, and and this roll is he's got he's got. Uh, not a very good roll. It's again. not a great roll. Yeah. So, I mean, the thing is, 
well, let's say he rolled one blaster and a couple blaster modifiers here. Yeah. If he rolls when it's going to be um, Ryan's turn, he has the opportunity to get rid of that one die. All of that damage is gone. If he's doing it in a reaction, he's going to have the next chance to activate his dice. Uh, it's a way to protect your hand. You feel like going fast. You feel like always reacting back with Django, but most of the time you're better off to wait for an opponent's initiated activation. Uh, Pro Yeti, I mean, it's it's fairly simple. You just need to keep the camera somewhat close to the to the table. We have a little bit of an oblique angle, so we can get even closer to the table then and still have a reasonable field of view. And lighting, like we found that lighting is is the big thing. If you just get like even a desk lamp with a daylight bulb, or what we're using is an LCD panel that 41 Games, their video department, has let us use for this event. Uh, I'll find that the the numbers, like the the faces on the dice, stick out a lot, a lot better than if you were just using ambient lighting. Of course, the other challenge when you're doing this in a store is making sure that you can hear the commentary over all of the background noise. Yeah. So that's that's a bit of a tricky thing, but I think we kind well, of figured that out. With in. a good directional microphone too, right? Like even with a lot of background noise, I think it's it's not that hard for you guys to hear what we're saying. So now this is what I'm saying with uh, with Chris's deck, and I see that Ryan has a very similar style of deck as well. Uh, this underworld connection, especially if you play it early, uh, the deck plays the long game, like. You just accept that Django dies early, and then you're just going to carry the rest of your game on the backs of those endless-ranked stormtroopers. And and now you're guaranteeing yourself three resources a turn, basically, with the Underworld Connections here. So we see in uh, Chris's hand, I see a First Order fight, TIE Fighter, and I also see a Black Market. Black Market is a card that Chris, I think, has been taking putting in and taking out like just testing with it uh, it is a support card a yellow support card um, when you roll it out uh, it has a special side that allows you to draw two cards and play an upgrade I think for one less from your hand something like that um, I, I'm not so sure how good it is in a deck that doesn't have a lot of upgrades but um, and I think this is the first tournament that Chris is playing with that with that change but uh, yeah, he, he decides to play the First Order TIE Fighter instead, rolls out a blank, discards. It looks like Ryan has either passed or claimed the battlefield. It's unclear because Ryan hasn't put the battlefield onto his side, but uh, Chris discards, re-rolls, gets a modifier and a special uh, on the First Order TIE Fighter. And of course the special is uh, the opponent loses all shields on all their characters. So Ryan's Ryan's Django has I think it looks like one or two shields. I can't it looks like one shield. Yeah, on one it. shield. This is effectively one damage on Django. So I think he's just deciding. Okay, dis discards the endless ranks. It's an interesting maneuver. It's an interesting maneuver because it's not like he's he's try he, he has the ability to finish off any of Ryan's characters this turn. Uh, I would have thought that I would have saved that for for after Django dies, and now you just want to start chaining your stormtroopers. Yeah, Perlietti, Chris. Uh, sorry. He, he might have thought if he could put a little bit of more damage on Django, uh, the Django reaction would give him enough to finish him off before yep. he uses any dice. So this is... Yeah. They're holding a blaster. Okay. Rolling out, and then Django activating in response. No the damage storm he troopers. Use. No. Uh, this one looks like two damage for, for Django. These these holdout blaster rolls haven't been very, uh, yeah. very effective. I mean, obviously, if this was an aggro versus a control deck, it would be working out... Uh, in the control deck's favor, but these both these guys are He's control choosing decks. to react with his, uh, yeah. with his Django. This is like a huge slap fight here. Just a lot of whiffs. But, but of course now I think Chris has a little bit of an advantage um, in the sense that Chris has gotten a TIE Fighter out. So he's, he's started his support train a little bit. Um, I, I question... I question the wisdom of putting 
sticking those holdout blasters on that trooper right now. Because part of Django's, I mean, Django's ability to activate out of phase, like, you want to put a lot of upgrades on him because you want to make his activation scary, right? If it's just a two dice Django, I mean, you could deal a maximum of four damage, but that's like, what, one in six times two, whatever well, that probability so is? If you think your opponent is really going to go target Django first regardless, yeah. if you have all of the support, all of the upgrades on Django, you do run the risk of them being able to take him out before he gets to use those dice. So there's that turn where potentially those dice are going to be wasted. So if you put them somewhere else, they're going to, you're not going to, you're going to lose that until well in the future. So, I mean, it's a small edge, but I can see where someone might be coming from. The counterpoint to that is like, first order uh, stormtroopers, especially if you look at Chris's Django right now, you it activate it. Yeah, it could be one shot yeah. by an upgraded Django. So that's that's what I'm thinking. Why that's maybe not be such a good idea. Uh, so reroll on Django looks like two resources here. Yeah, they they don't him. need that many resources now. They're looking for damage. No. And that that discarding of the endless ranks. That's like I, I really want to ask Chris why he did that because I feel like this game is going to be one on the back of like who can outlast the other player. Here. So we see, um, I, I mean, we didn't comment on it earlier, but Chris is playing Promotion. He played a Promotion on his First Order Stormtrooper. Fairly cheap, allows you to cycle through your deck uh, quickly, adds a die. Of course, the plus one melee may not be always relevant because Django may not be there uh, <laughs> to, for you to use his melee side. Okay, so that looks like uh, four damage onto Django, so now uh, both Django's are in danger of being killed off. Killed off by. Uh, looks like Chris's Django needs three more damage. He has eight damage on him plus a shield, whereas uh, Ryan also needs three more damage as he does not have any shields on his Django. But uh, on Ryan's side, that Django is not the scary one. But of course, once Chris's uh, Django dies, then. Uh, he's just going to move all those onto a stormtrooper. So it looks like this was the three damage side rolled out by the first order TIE fighter. We're going to see if uh, Ryan has any sort of removal here to deal with that. Uh, plays an infantry grenade. Okay, so this is not something I think that Chris plays in his version. Um, generally regarded as a fairly bad card because... It, for, uh, it may be seeing a little bit more success now because the special allows you to deal discard it to deal two damage yeah. to each of your opponent's characters. There goes there goes Ryan's uh, yeah Django. Um, so that the, the grenade might be why he's playing the Starship Graveyard. Ah yes, that's, bring that back out after he's discarded it. So uh, and also because of the prevalence of three character decks now. I mean, we're, we're definitely seeing a drift away from the Django Veers, two character Vader Raider, uh, that sort of thing. And now that the these these flavors of Django decks with three characters in them have become more popular, yeah, uh, we're definitely seeing a you know maybe thermal detonators might might exactly. see a lot more. You have more to wonder now. if he's playing the infantry grenades. Is yeah. he also playing thermal detonators? I, I suspect he probably is. Yeah. Well, I don't know if you want to play thermal detonator in this deck if you assume that Django's going to die early. Uh, you wouldn't be able to play it because you need to spot you a yellow spot, character yeah. to, to play it. Yeah. So it is. Yeah, I think that was the turn that Ryan really needed to get kill Django. And I, I don't know if you've been noticing this, Travis, but I, I found that like Chris, uh, he plays really smart. He always leaves one of his, like especially now that Django's almost dead. He's always. That's gonna go let him know that they did use. Yep. Yeah, he, he always leaves one of his stormtroopers unactivated because he knows that the Django's yeah he, he knows that the Django's gonna die, so he needs to be able to have a character ready to accept those holdout blasters so they can then roll out immediately, sort of get that dice advantage. What did he what put the one damage on the uh, stormtrooper? Uh, not sure. It might have been backup muscle maybe. Although I don't know why you wouldn't just put it on Django. Maybe he just figures yeah, he that Django Django would have died there. Because we do see a depleted backup muscle now on Ryan's side. Yeah, Gandork, I, I agree with you too. The thermal detonator 
Uh, you know, most of those sides are discard, which is not really what you're looking for in this deck. If you want that damage. Of course, the Thermal Detonator has two special sides. You do have to pay one resource for one of those special sides. Here we go. But, oh, yeah. don't do this. What are you doing? Is, it, is this a PC? discard a tactical mastery to put a rifle in play? No, it's play squad tactical tactics mastery. to activate. I see. He's trying to chain a bunch of stuff together. But no, but you you got you got to do the tactical mastery so you have a chance to kill Django before right. he'll be able to do damage. Okay. So it's like tactical mastery. Then yeah. the squad tactics if you want. Yep. Because uh, like Django would be dead right now, and right. you wouldn't be able to see that dice now. Django, yeah, so Django's yeah. going to do a ton of damage here. Yeah, so th th this is like one of the sort of subtleties of playing a deck, especially Django Mirrors or anything against Django. You have to like think about, especially when you're using uh, cards that give you extra actions, like the timing of those actions, right? Because we just saw here, uh, that was a little bit of an inefficient use, allow, allow Chris to roll out his Django and do something afterward, right? Well, now, now I'm confused again. Why not use the, the, two the rifle and get rid of Django, of prevent that yeah. damage? I mean, when, uh, when, I don't know. When you have a lot of... It's easier yeah. not being in the game, it's, I suppose. It's a lot easier when you're just wa watching from a bird's eye view than, than when you're, like, kind of in the game itself. Because he gets to put that, put that damage out. Yeah. Interesting. I'm surprised Chris didn't... Uh, didn't deal the damage to the trooper or whatever? To someone, yeah. I think now they're just discovering that. Yeah, I think I think maybe Ryan just missed it that the damage was unblockable. They, um, they must have both missed it because yeah. Chris would have used his dice. Yeah. Okay. So a, a bit of a lucky break for uh, Ryan here, but I mean this is why Chris he didn't activate one of his stormtroopers because he knew Django was very likely to die here, and so now he's able to roll out. Uh, looks like a two damage side for one resource. One shield and a blank for that first order stormtrooper. Uh, still, Chris still has to roll out that uh, first order Tie Fighter die. So not quite enough to one shot one of the stormtroopers. Yeah, this is a uh, dug in playing it, eh? Playing it for the shields. Can you tell if uh, Ryan has any cards left in his hand? I think he has like maybe no. I think he's out. So instead of discarding well, to re-roll, he decided to put three shields onto his stormtrooper. That's good. So after this yeah. roll, he could have one shot one of them, but he can't yeah. now because of the shields. Okay. Sorry, don't you have to put all the shields on one character with Duggan? No, you can distribute them. Yeah. So I think Chris is trying to decide which one to target. I think you target the one with the holdout blasters on them. It does, yeah. You the, might the, as well. the reason, because you have three redeploy cards on that first order stormtrooper, but you have a pretty good like rifle. Well, um, so there is the advantage. Like, you kill the other one. Yeah. One of those is coming over. Oh, uh, true. Yeah. But are, do you think he's going to discard the infantry grenades to take the other holdout blaster? Uh, uh, so between a holdout blaster and an F eleven D, which one would you rather have? Uh, I think for the long term, he's got to take the blaster. The F eleven D blaster, yeah. Because it's great to get the extra shot, but over the long term, it's got like four damage size, I think, on the F eleven D. Yes. Yeah. I maybe maybe Ryan didn't draw any of his endless ranks. Maybe he's not even playing them. I don't know. This is a lot different. This version is, I mean, a lot different. It's it's relative when you're talking about a card pool so small. But uh, well, you I mean, yeah, yeah. The only thing compared to compared I, to Chris's. I doubt Chris has any expensive things that don't read a point. Like he's got the promotion. He's yep. got the blaster pistol. Those are fine. I don't think he has the blaster rifle. He doesn't have the infantry. No, he's he's not playing any of that stuff. It's just all cheap redeploy stuff, and he's saving. He saves all his money to play those uh, those Tie Fighters. The the idea being, your backup you're, muscle now. Yeah. Backup muscle, and that's nope. Not, one more damage, which which is fine because now next turn all he has to do is just like backup muscle. Yeah, exhaust the backup muscle and kill off the thing. So that is a dead man walking stormtrooper. And now we're going into the next turn. Uh, Ryan had claimed the battlefield, and I think uh, what. What Ryan so is let's get a going to do you. is, yeah. I don't know. I think at this point you just kind of accept that thing's going to die. I mean, like, 
even if, are you going to tactical mastery for? I, I suppose if you tactical mastery and enrolled a special on both your blaster rifle and your infantry grenade, it would be worth it. But well, I mean, there's not really going to be a better opportunity. Like, there's not going to be something else he'd rather do. With it. Yeah. So no tactical master here, just rolling straight out. See. And he do, does roll the two damages, but as specials. But like Chris, he he had him. So that's a dead first order stormtrooper. Yeah, if there had been a tactical mastery there. Yeah, that would have been an amazing, amazing roll there. So I mean, this this game is solidly in uh, Chris's hands at yeah. this point. It, it's up to see whether or not, I, I can't tell if uh, Ryan, so so the people at home, we have these chat windows up on either side, so it might be easy for you guys to see what's in what's in the player's hands, um, but not for us so much. So I don't think I see, uh, I don't see an endless ranks in Ryan's hand. Even if he did have it, he would need to roll one more resource. He'd have to roll a resource face on his surviving Stormtrooper plus the Underworld connection activation. Uh, meanwhile, on Chris's side, he'd just roll a very uh, respectable 4 damage on his Stormtrooper die. Uh, so this is Ryan going after the unactivated Stormtrooper, of course, hoping to try to kill that off. I mean, he doesn't have the damage to kill it off, but uh, kill it off so that the Hold up blasters when they redeploy to the already exhausted stormtrooper on Chris's side, that they wouldn't have a chance to be reused again. Dug it again, more shields. At this point, though, I think just unless, a matter of time. Yeah, this is just uh, Ryan slowly bleeding out here, unfortunately. And this is another great roll by Chris's Tie Fighter, three damage here. So what? It looks like. Um, Looks like uh, Ryan. He doesn't like you. Get yeah. rid of that big, dice, so big damage dice. You need to deal seven damage to kill off that st uh, that stormtrooper this turn. So rolling out, we see a two damage side and two resources showing for Chris. Underworld connections on Ryan's side, taking the money. Chris takes two dollars for himself. Uh, he'll be in endless ranks range next turn. Not that he needs it, of course. Uh, earlier versions of Chris's deck used to run ATST, and he told me uh, after some playtesting that he found that he was always discarding it because um, even even with all the money generation, like he found that it wasn't coming out early enough for him for his liking. So another backup muscle, I think, uh, unless uh, unless Ryan is indeed hiding a. Endless ranks in his hand, or is he able? If he's able he to draw, survive he the draws next for turn, one. like yeah. so, he is. Um, he'll get two resources, underworld connections. Yeah, he'll be able to play an endless rank before he, before the trooper would die. Well, let's say you, you get two resources. Yeah, that's true. Even so, first action takes a resource. Take a resource. Then he then, rolls. Yeah, the trooper will still be alive in time for endless ranks. Oh, there's that drudge work. I guess he drew it really late. Um, yeah, at this point, you, there's no reason to play it. So uh, Ryan does get the first action. Let's see if he's going to dig. Yeah, yeah he, 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 he discarded a so bunch he has of it cards rank. there. Yeah. You well, saw it in his hand? No, no. I just mean just jumping everything like that suggests yeah. that he does have one. Uh, I see a cannon fodder. I don't think I see it in his hand. No, I see he doesn't like you in his hand, but I don't see an endless ranks. So, four damage on the trooper plus three shields. Six damage uh, is what Chris needs to uh, win this game here. Only five. It's only two. Oh, is it two, two shields left? Here. Okay. First order TIE Fighter. Uh, so, that's a clear signal that he doesn't have an endless ranks in his hand. Well, why start there? Roll, roll your trooper. Maybe yeah. you have damage to take one of them out of the battle. Yep. Yeah, you only need three damage to uh, take out the holdout blaster guy. Okay, Ryan rolls a four, it looks like four damage here. Yep. So that would be enough actually to kill the, the Stormtrooper, but, but yeah. He doesn't like use though. Yeah. Man, I, you know, I've been, 
trying for a long time to find really good villain control deck. Like I was playing uh, Jabba Vader for a long time. I just found that like blue doesn't have the the kind of control that you get when you pair yellow with uh, yellow with red. Because yellow and red villain, in my opinion, has the best control in the game right now. Sure. With he doesn't like you, uh, the best defense, cannon fodder, those are all villain cards. Um, and of course, Chris running super light on upgrades has like about five or six supports in his deck. The rest, all events, is just removal. <laughs> So it's really frustrating to play against this deck because yeah. uh, it, it seems like every time you get something good, he just removes it. And uh, oh wow, yeah, he only he has two damage on the backup muscle, yeah. so he only needs three. Uh, Syrian and Pearly, I could check for you very quickly, uh, see if we can find any of those decks, and then hopefully we can feature those on stream. Uh, yeah, we did. We did in the yeah. first round. We did have an Akbar two hired gun deck up against Kylo and uh, Dooku. So we have one of the players usually uh, has have been had a lot of success with his Luke Akbar deck. Um, so he's won or finished highly in uh, at least a couple tournaments so far. I think it's still a thing. Luke Akbar. Is Sam playing his Luke Akbar? Uh, I don't. I think Sam was done, so I wasn't didn't have a chance to see his deck. But it looks like Patrick is playing. Uh, the E Ray and Luke deck, okay. or sorry, E Luke and Ray deck. So I'm gonna ask him if he's uh, willing to be on stream next round. I'm not sure what his record is. I could ask him that as well. Uh, so I've I've actually never heard of that E E Luke and Ray. Is that a thing? I haven't seen it. I think I also saw a Training Day deck as well. So that's uh, uh, Elite Ray and Elite Qui Gon. Uh, Gandork, I found actually that between Jabba Dooku and Jabba Vader, I actually like Jabba Vader better. Uh, because while Dooku is hard to kill, uh, especially in you know, like a control deck, like I don't know if you're referring to a control Jabba Dooku or a mill, like a control damage Jabba Dooku or a control mill Jabba Dooku, but I found that Vader, like in order for control decks to work, they also need to apply some sort of pressure. And I find that Vader applies a lot more offensive pressure than, than Dooku does in the late game. So I, I did step away for a second, but I'm yeah, actually Chris, surprised. Chris has just been waiting with his last Stormtrooper yeah. for the one to die okay. so he can move the blasters over. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually surprised this game is still going on. I mean, kudos but to Ryan for, Chris, for Chris holding Chris is just out. playing patient, uh, trying he, to avoid making any mistakes. Yeah, he, he's, he's had quite a lot of ex, uh, experience with this deck in the last couple of weeks, so I'm not surprised that he's playing as tight as he is. I mean, we did see that potential uh, misstep with uh, Chris not killing that that Stormtrooper before the unblockable yeah. damage. This is more than enough yeah. damage to finish him off. Uh, he probably still has the... Uh, even with this... Yeah, because he doesn't like you. He removes... Yeah. What the two damage and then that's what that's still that's still five damage he has on the table so is it five looks like it's got three. Two back oh muscle. the two backup muscle you're right so yeah there go the shields and then one damage uh, and two backup muscles takes a dollar and then Chris is gonna deal one so that's five and then two backup muscles is six seven yeah so I mean I, I like this the, I think this deck is interesting uh, I think Chris is a little bit more of a refined version of it yeah. So, still interested to see if actually uh, Ryan was actually playing any uh, endless rank.